Welcome, 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 everybody, to the Straight Line with Ryan Leaf. Divisional playoff weekend. It is the best weekend of football that there is. I would argue Super Wild Card Weekend can be there, but as we saw, there can be some blowouts, okay? What divisional NFL playoff weekend looks like. It's it's the cream of the crop. It's the best football teams in all the land uh, going at it. Two straight days. You get four games all in its own uh, self-contained module. And we start in Baltimore with the Houston Texans. Your boy here is going to be on the call there. Uh, I'm going to venture from the cold of Buffalo to the frigid cold of Baltimore. The good news is that I can take Amtrak, like I told you. I don't have to go with the air air travel, which has been a, just an absolute um, dumpster fire for the past year and a half. I don't know what's going on, but I digress. We will not talk about that. Let's talk about what's going on in Dallas, right? This was a done deal. Mike McCarthy, three consecutive years, division champ, out in the wild card. Five seed, get a win at Tampa, and then get blown out in San Francisco. Get back, win the division, two home playoff games, maybe have a chance to get to the Super Bowl. Eh, not again. You lose at home to the seven seed for the first time ever. Maybe it was because of all the liability talk around his game management. They just kept the game so much of a blowout, his game management never had to come into play. Jerry Jones was not fooled by that aspect of things, and he says he's going to keep him on for another year. Well, very reminiscent to Jason Garrett. One year left on his contract, let him go out and coach it. You don't have to pay a guy not to coach, then go you know, write a huge check for somebody else. Not that that should bother Jerry Jones. I'm just I'm a little confused as to why this happened. I don't necessarily know where you go and get a coach. There has to be somebody who can do something different, something bigger, something better. Bottom line is, for three consecutive years, your team that you coach – laid the worst egg at the worst possible time. And that's just how it went. San Francisco at home, San Francisco on the road, and now the Green Bay Packers at home when everything was trending in that direction, where you hadn't lost a game at home. So the fact that you got home field advantage for the first two rounds made it seem almost like it was a lock for people to say you were going to the NFC Championship. No. So I'm a little dumbfounded here, a little confused as to why this was done. You know, we'll see how everybody rebounds. Bottom line, three biggest games, uh, three biggest um, you know, disappointments in the Mike McCarthy era uh, there in Dallas. We'll see if Dan Quinn is a part of that equation. He's interviewing for head coaching jobs around the league, though that performance against the Packers may not do him a lot to secure uh, a head coaching job again. That was a putrid defensive performance against a Packers team that was well-prepared and they are, they are playing about as good a football as you can at the moment. All right, let's go to Pittsburgh. Mike Tomlin, of course, walked off uh, after that Buffalo Bills loss of his press conference when asked a question about his contract and what's next. Uh, I, you know, in those moments, there, I was on the sideline. I talked to Coach Tomlin before the game as well as at halftime. His biggest disappointment was the fact that they turned the football over in the first half. If we don't do that, we're in this football game. Sure enough, they don't. They don't turn it over in the second half. They get within a score before Josh Allen, Josh Allens, and, and puts that one out of reach. But he was really frustrated because he wants to coach, and he knows these guys are good enough to get it done. I think bottom line, they just got to find themselves a quarterback, whatever that looks like. But anyway, Mike Tomlin's going to stick around for his 18th year. 17 consecutive years of 500 ball or better. Uh, he came back in a bit of a better mood today, joked around with, uh, the reporter who asked the question, he just wasn't in the mindset to discuss that at the time. And I understand it. I get it. You are emotional. You are frustrated. You know what cap how capable you are. And if you would have had T.J. Watt, what that game would have looked like differently. Um, having to trot Miles Jack out there who just got run up and down. A uh, guy was on the couch most of the year, uh, asked to come out and play, and he just, he just wasn't up to the task against the elite players for the Buffalo Bills. But Mike Tomlin will be back as the Steelers head coach. And thank you. Thank you. As a Steelers fan, thank you. 
Uh, also, I asked him if I could get some Steelers gear before the game, and he said, yeah, and if he would have up and left, I don't know who I contact then. I don't know. That's my guy. That's my guy. All right? Rumors swirling around Pennsylvania. Not about Mike Tomlin, about Nick Sirianni, head football coach for the Philadelphia Eagles, the head football coach of the NFC champions just a year ago. About him not having a head coaching job. You lose your offensive and defensive coordinators, and you look a bit exposed. What happens there? I believe he stays. I, I, if I'm Howie Roseman, I don't think the guys in that locker room look at Sirianni as a guy that lost the locker room. I think that there was a, a, a disconnect. I think that there was a, a lack of good scheme on the back end. And the Jonathan Gannon stuff, whatever was the bother for so all, everybody's in that locker room on the defensive side, they're probably, you know, wishing their lucky stars that they had him back calling plays for them because he just he was able to get the most out of them. They may have not liked how he went about it, but he got it done, and that's what we're seeing down in Arizona. They got their guy as a head coach down there, uh, and unfortunately now Philadelphia is in a position of what next. And I don't think it is going away from, from Nick Sirianni. I really don't. He's still the coach that got you to the NFC Championship game, to the Super Bowl a year ago, within three points and maybe a bad call on a defensive holding aspect of things. And then it got your team out to a 10-1 and start with a lot of banged-up players and a lot of egos to manage and two new coordinators to go through. It, it just it's, it's shocking that that's the conversation that someone's having, that those are rumors that actually exist. I don't know where they're coming from. I don't think they're real, and I don't think they're going to move off him. I think he's the coach for next year, and we'll see how it goes going into next season. I would have more faith in the Philadelphia Eagles next year than I would in the Dallas Cowboys, so that tells you a lot about if one coach gets fired and the other one is asked to stay. We'll see how that ultimately comes about. Uh, the Falcons, uh, they're throwing their hat into the ring big time. Bill Belichick and Jim Harbaugh both interviewed this week. Um Arthur Blank has a blank check to write them, of course. Um, there's some real talent in Atlanta. Arthur Smith just jumbled it together. Uh, no quarterback, really. What does that look like for Bill Belichick when he doesn't have a quarterback? That's what we saw over the last four years in New England. I saw a really interesting stat of late. You look at Mike Tomlin. You look at Bill Belichick, um, and I forget the other one, but it was similar in stature to Ben Roethlisberger and Tom Brady. Oh, and Sean Payton with Drew Brees. Those guys removed collectively as, a co as, as coaches are under 500 without the big star quarterback. That goes a long way of telling the story about you need a great coach, but you have to have that great quarterback. You just do. And those three right there haven't been able to get it done. Bill Belichick in particular. If he goes to Atlanta, what does that mean? Who's the quarterback there? He's not going to run out there with, I don't know, Mac Jones uh, speedster in Desmond Ritter. I don't know what that is. Um, Jim Harbaugh is another story. He's going to run the football, run it, run it around your throat, and he can win with the quarterback that is, is a game manager. Uh, it's just the way it is. Uh, he's more up to speed with what the next generation of, of NFL football is going to look like. So where does Atlanta go here? Well, if I'm Atlanta, I'd probably go with uh, uh, Jim Harbaugh. Uh, that probably gives you your best chance to win uh, right away. Bill Belichick, unfortunately, has to find a place to land, if he does, with an established quarterback, a guy that can play. And that, for me, is the Los Angeles Chargers, and it, it continues to be. The, the team we talked about when, when Brandon Staley was fired. Um, that's the spot. You got a quarterback. The defense has a, a, a lot of talent, and, and you do your thing. Is L.A. the spot for, for Bill next? I, I don't know. I, there has been a lot of opportunity around the league with the positions that are open, and teams have seemed to balk at it. Very similar to what teams did last year with Lamar Jackson during the offseason, when he was essentially up for grabs. Now, doesn't mean that the Ravens wouldn't have matched whatever anybody else was doing, but I think it told a story. And it's a story that 
these teams let an opportunity slip through their fingertips. And if you don't grab maybe the greatest coach of all time with a chip on his shoulder trying to showcase something different, you may regret that down the line. We'll see. We'll wait and see. All right, so we talked about the Jason Kelsey news uh, the other day from the hotel room in Buffalo. I think we were may have been the only show out there or, or, or group talking about it in a reasoned, measured approach. Like, I didn't buy for one second. I mean, the NFL threw it up on their damn Twitter thing. You know, congratulations, Jason Kelsey. You don't make that decision in that moment, the emotion behind it, the physical beating that has gone down, and the disappointment of a season that you came back for to try to win a championship. That's not when you make that decision. And Jason Kelsey announced on his podcast with his brother that, hey, no, I talked to a few players. Nick asked him to kind of step up and talk. It was emotional. I'll make this decision when I'm good, good goddamn and ready. Okay? That's what he's saying. Um, you know, I, I also love the, the kind of, you know, smack back here from, from players. Like, I'm not letting Adam Schefter or, or Rap Sheet, you know, steal my, my announcement. Hell, I'll come back and play one more year just to prove them wrong mentality. Maybe Jason Kelsey will do that. I know a lot of Philadelphia Eagles fans would love it. I'd love it. I understand the toll it takes on his body, but I think he's one of the most impressive people on the planet, and to get to watch him play football is an absolute pleasure. Uh, regardless of when you decide to hang him up there, uh, 6-2, uh, you're going to go down in history as one of the greatest to ever do it. Uh, and to come from where you came from and to do it in the manner in which you did, uh, you are a role model and some, someone that I look up to and I think a lot of people do too as well. So congratulations. Uh, I hope to see you next year uh, when you step on the field one more time. We'll see. All right. There you have it, everybody. There's some news from the NFL. When we come back, we break down all four of the divisional round playoff games as I will be traveling to Baltimore tomorrow and unavailable to film our show so we can get you locked in for the weekend. We went four and three last week on both props and game calls against the spread. We'll see if we can improve that just a little bit and finish on a super high note. Right here on the straight line with Ryan Leaf. Welcome back, everybody, to the Straight Line with Ryan Leaf. Let's get you ready for the divisional round of the NFL playoffs this Saturday and Sunday. I will be on the call for Baltimore and Houston. Three out of the four games this weekend are all rematches from the regular season and rematches of games that weren't necessarily close outside of the Chiefs and the Bills that really swayed a lot of what went down and where we're at right now. The Baltimore Ravens and the Houston Texans opened the season against one another. C.J. Stroud making his first start and Lamar Jackson making his first start in Todd Munkin's new offense. So we didn't get to necessarily see the best of both players. I think we saw what could be the Ravens defensively dominated, ran the football, and on the other side of that, Houston found themselves a quarterback. He didn't turn the football over, but they weren't able to get into the end zone. And so that was the big difference. It was an ultimate uh, beatdown by the Ravens, but both these teams are, are much different right now. There's something to be said about divisional round football and wild card football, okay? It's all good in the hood when you talk about winning a wild card game because it is. It's a big game. You win a playoff game, especially when you're a rookie and you're Houston and a rookie head coach, all of those things. I get that. But that's what people were saying about the Giants last year. Right? They upset the Minnesota Vikings on the road, and they were like, oh, okay. I bet you they give Philly a run next week. Nah, that's not how it works. It's divisional football. It's the first uh, overall seeds that are back out on the field. Now, the Ravens and most of their big-time starters, they haven't played in almost three weeks. They took off the final week of the season against the Steelers, and then they didn't play last week. Is there going to be some rust to kick off the tires? I don't think so. I think they absolutely boat race them early. I think C.J. Stroud struggles a bit. This may look a little bit like the Jets game out in the cold where he was rushed and blitzed a ton before he left the game with the concussion. Uh, unfortunately um, for him, I think his season ends. 
no matter how great it's been. This line is large for a divisional round playoff game. And I usually like to stick away from ones that are venturing towards the double digit spot. But I went all in. I went Ravens minus the nine and a half in this one. Uh, I think they just get out early. And I think it looks a lot like it's been against teams like Detroit and Seattle where they've just dominated. Um, and I think they need to do that. I think they need to exercise some demons um, a bit. Uh, there's the the stat going around that C.J. Stroud and Lamar Jackson each have the same amount of touchdown passes and wins in the playoffs in their careers. There's truth to that. Lamar's one and three. Three touchdown passes. So we'll see where it goes from here. But I like that one. The top player prop for me on this one is Lamar um, under 10 and a half rushing yards. I don't think they're going to ask him to do much rushing the football. I think they're going to be able to do it through the air. Mark Andrews is going to play. That's a combo. You may see some really neat scheme-oriented double tight end stuff with Andrews and likely out on the field at the same time. Zay Flowers, that crew, I think they go up and jump out big. I got same game parlays for every single one of these games as well. We're going to go uh, Ravens minus 9.5, Ravens minus 7.5, first half I think they jump out and they're uh, bigger than a touchdown uh, lead at halftime and then we went with the uh, with the Lamar under the 10 and a half I think that came out to be plus 400 uh, I don't know if you guys remember last week we hit that uh, we hit that Chiefs uh, Dolphins one uh, which was pretty good so you better be trailing me on that one all right let's go to San Francisco where uh, they as well the number one overall seed after not having played for a couple weeks trot out themselves against a Packers team that may be playing better than anybody right now in terms of offense, defense, special teams. Like I said, this one worries me. Two teams, both one seeds, nine and a half point favorites. I think one does get it done, and I think the other one's a struggle. I would probably go Packers plus nine and a half, but I even I, I just took the total in this one and I went over. I think both offenses are going to be able to score. It's just going to be a matter of which defense gets the stop at the right time, which you have to put in the the side of uh, of the 49ers being able to do that. But this one worries me. I think this the irony of all the things Aaron Rodgers, who was never able to beat the San Francisco 49ers in the playoffs, 0-4, and to watch Jordan Love go to the playoffs in his first season as a starter, something Aaron Rodgers didn't do, and then to go and get a win against San Francisco, I think would put the cherry on top. Uh, that would be unbelievable if we get Green Bay, uh, Detroit in uh, – in the NFC Championship in Detroit, I think people would go nuts. It doesn't, it, you know, or or the Bucks, you know, or Green Bay at Tampa Bay, the Bays, the Battle of the Bays, a throwback for the NFC Championship, and Baker Mayfield playing for a chance to go to the Super Bowl in his first year with the Tampa Bay Bucks. That would go a long way, huh, people? All right, so I went with the over here. I went over 50 and a half points scored. My top player prop in this one was Aaron Jones and anytime touchdown. Same game parlay for this one. Of course, we went with the over. We went with the Aaron Jones anytime touchdown as well as a Christian McCaffrey anytime touchdown. It's a plus 300 value for this same game parlay. Let's head to Detroit on Sunday. The Lions with a huge win over the Los Angeles Rams. Everybody's been celebrating all week. That pressure is off. I do think that pressure cooker that existed last week is a big reason why they didn't score hardly any points in the second half. But... They're so thankful for Jared Goff to pick up that first down late. That changed the whole outlook and dynamic of the Detroit Lions football team. They are six-and-a-half-point favorites. Uh, that number seems a little iffy to me. I went with the under on this one. I think this is going to be more of a low-scoring game. They played each other earlier in the year. Let me give you some stats here. Mayfield was barely 50%. He threw a pick. Uh, the leading rusher for the Detroit Lions was Craig Reynolds. So Gibbs and Montgomery not able to really go. Goff had 44 pass attempts. And White, who's been really special for him running the football of late, only had 26 yards rushing. So both these teams are completely different. I think it's a closer football game. My, my worry is, is they win by seven uh, or win by like four or something like that. It's just so iffy on the spread for me that I went with the total once again. I went with the under here, 48 and a half. Uh, one way or the other, let's say Detroit, you know, 24-21, uh, you know, or it could end up being 24-17, you know, and then you, and then you lose. 
So I, I'm going with the uh, I'm going with the uh, uh, under on this one uh, for the matchup between the Bucks at the Lions. Um, excited for this football game. Excited for all the games, but this one in particular. My top player prop in this one is Kate Otten over 35 plus receiving yards. Okay. He was a big target for uh, Baker Mayfield last week. I think he continues to get targets as long as he catches the football. He dropped a few balls in that game. Um, my same game parlay, Montgomery, anytime touchdown, along with the Otten, uh, 35 plus receiving yards and the under. This has got some crazy value. This one jumped up for me. I saw it. Plus 830. Plus 830 on the value of this same game parlay. All right, let's head to the biggest and best one. I thought I might actually have to call this game because I was never going to get out of Buffalo because of the weather. Well, guess what happened today, folks? It snowed another 18 inches. The Chiefs under Patrick Mahomes have never played a road playoff game. They had opportunities to do it, but teams above them got beat, and therefore they were able to host. They have never gone on the road in the Patrick Mahomes era to play a playoff game. This will be the first, and it's going to be cold, snowy. Bills Mafia is going to be going crazy. The Bills are a three-point favorite here. What kind of trigger... Does Sean McDermott have? Is he triggered by the fact that it's the Chiefs? What if things get tight? Does the mindset go back to the last time they saw them in the divisional round of the playoffs in Kansas City where they had it won and they blew it with 13 seconds to go? You just don't know until it actually happens. But what I saw firsthand from Josh Allen and Joe Brady in the scheme that they had put together, it was the most impressive I've seen Josh Allen play. The way he used his eyes to dictate coverage, his authoritative throwing, the fact that he didn't turn it over. I gave him a stat last week, 16-0 and as a starter when he doesn't turn it over. Well, now he's 17-0 because he didn't turn it over again last week. They win every single time when he doesn't turn it over. I don't think he turns it over. I think he uses his legs and, of course, uses that great arm uses both those tight ends in extremely uh, good manners once again, uh, and they get the win. Uh, I'm going Buffalo minus the three to get back to the AFC Championship and absolutely stun everybody out there that was calling for Sean McDermott's job at the bye week when they were 6-6. Six and six. This team, uh, if they get lucky, could host an AFC Championship, most likely hits the road to play Baltimore. Buffalo minus the three ends the charade of what Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs are having to go on the road in the playoffs. Bills minus the three. My top player prop for this one, Allen, over 33 and a half pass attempts. When it's cold outside, your hand is like an oven. And that ball that you put in your hand is like an ice cube. It just sticks to it. And you can fire it around wherever you want, as hard as you want. And we saw that happen in the game the other night where it was colder, actually, because of the wind. I don't think the wind's going to be as active in this game, so it shouldn't make it as difficult to throw the football at all. I expect both guys to throw the football a lot, but more than 33 and a half attempts for Josh Allen in this matchup is my top player prop. My uh, same game parlay, take the Bills money line, take Allen anytime touchdown, and take Rasheed Rice under 75 and a half receiving yards. Great game last week, 130 yards. We're going to go back to him. You don't think Buffalo's going to have a plan? They've been pretty thinned out on the back end because of some injuries on the defense. That may present a problem. What's not going to present a problem is how stacked they are on the defensive front. Daquan Jones comes back after a few weeks ago. That's allowed Ed Oliver to get active. Russo, Vaughn Miller, everybody. That room is really deep. They get after the quarterback, keep him in tow. Last time they played, uh, if you recall, uh, was the uh, Kadarius Tony penalty that cost them the win. Not only did it cost them the win, it cost the Bills. It would have cost the Bills a chance at the playoffs because one more loss would have kept them out of that conversation. They would have most likely not got to get in. They certainly wouldn't be the number two seed hosting the Kansas City Chiefs right now. What a huge penalty! They held uh, Patrick Mahomes only to one carry in that game for eight yards. 
we'll see how well they do locking him down and not allowing him to do the things he loves to do on third down. So there you have it, everybody. Uh, we're going Ravens and the Bills to win outright. All right, we 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 believe they win. The other two games, I'm going to say, are up in the air a bit, and I think that probably will shock a lot of people who are looking at the 49ers. I just have a sneaky feeling about this one. You know, if you're putting some parlays together, maybe throw the Packers in there as a possibility of getting it done. That would be something really, really special for the Pack and for Green Bay and Jordan Love. As for the Bucks lions let's just enjoy it. Let's not read too much into it. Let's just have a, a good defensive battle, quarterbacks battling back and forth, and someone gets a win at the end. Whether that's Baker Mayfield or Jared Goff, I'd be as pleasantly – uh, happy for both of them uh, if one of them is playing in an NFC championship game uh, a week from now. Enjoy. Best football weekend of the year. We'll see you next week when we recap it all. Have a great time, everybody. Thanks for watching The Straight Line with Ryan Leaf.